This is the fifth and final module in our unit of reading and annotating content in Zotero, and it's optional. The content here is tailored for people who want to keep their notes and highlights from PDF files as part of the Zotero collection, but who also like to use tablets such as iPads for reading and annotating articles and book chapters. This is an advanced feature of the Zotfile plugin, and it can help take your work to the next level. This module assumes you already have Zotfile installed. If you don't, information on how to get it is in the previous module. To follow along in this module, you need to have Zotero installed on your computer. You can get the software at Zotero.org. And for more information on the basics of using Zotero, see our online guide or check out the Mastering Zotero guide on GitHub. This module also uses examples from a sample Zotero library. You can use your own Zotero library to try out the features I cover, but I've also made the sample items for this course available for you to import into your own Zotero library. That way you can see exactly what I see and follow along click by click. To learn how to get and import these sample items, see the course setup module and come back to this one when you're ready. Here's a quick overview of how this all works. It feels just a little bit like magic once it's all set up. First, you send a PDF file from Zotero to your tablet. Then, you use your tablet and your favorite PDF annotation software to read and annotate the article or item. When you're done, you send the PDF file back from your tablet to Zotero, and all of your notes and annotations will be extracted into Zotero notes. I really like this feature because I find reading and annotating on a tablet to be more focused and more portable than sitting at a computer or lugging my laptop around. It's a really nice feature for times when I really want to do some focused reading. Sound cool? Let's get started. This module covers setting up Zotfile to support your tablet, moving PDF files from Zotero to your tablet, and then of course getting your PDF files back from your tablet and extracting the annotations. I'm assuming here that you've already seen the previous module, which covers how to download and install Zotfile. And, of course, I'm assuming that you have a tablet that you can use to view and annotate your PDFs. There are two things you need in order to make this all work. The first thing is a place to share your files between your tablet and your computer. The second thing, of course, is software on your tablet that you can use to annotate PDFs. Let's talk about software for your tablet first. The obvious choice is Adobe Acrobat Reader since it's free and available on all platforms, but I know it's not everybody's favorite. If you don't want to use it, there are other options. For Android devices, I recommend apps like PDF Element or Zodo. For iPads, I recommend PDF Expert and Liquid Text. Basically though, you can use any PDF viewer that supports annotations and highlighting and that allows you to open files from an online location such as Google Drive, OneDrive, or Dropbox. The other thing that we need is an online or shared location for our files. This is how we'll get PDF files from your desktop or laptop onto your tablet or iPad. Think of this location as a shipping box for your PDFs. You put Zotero files into the box and then you use your tablet to open the files that are in the box. Then when you're done working with them, Zotero uses this shipping box location to put the annotated PDF files back into your Zotero library. There are many options you can use for the purpose of transferring files between Zotero and your tablet. OneDrive, Google Drive, Apple's iCloud, and Dropbox are all popular, and you can create an account on those platforms for free. The critical feature for any service that you choose is that you have to be able to access the files directly from your computer and from your tablet. All of the options I just mentioned will let you do this. Now just remember that putting files online can expose them in case of a hack or a data breach, so be careful if the PDF files you have contain sensitive or confidential information. For now, I'm assuming that you're working with non-sensitive items such as journal articles, and we'll be using Google Drive for our example. So for this example, we need Google Drive installed on our desktop and on our tablet so it can be accessed from both sides. I have the application installed on my laptop. By the way, they call the app Backup and Sync on desktops now, but the mobile version for phones and tablets is still called Google Drive. And here you can see I also have the app installed on my iPad. I've logged into my Google account in both apps, both locations, and this lets me see my online files from both devices. Now, why do we need this? Well, we want Google Drive to be our shipping box. Zotero will need to be able to put files into the Google Drive box so that the tablet can get them. And the PDF reader on your tablet will have to have access to Google Drive so it can read and save the files that you're annotating. 
So to keep things clean and simple, in case we want to use Google Drive for other things, I've created a folder on my Google Drive called Zotfile, and I'm going to use this as the place to send files back and forth. Now, creating a separate folder for it just means that all the files are kept together and they don't get mixed up with any other things that I might have on Google Drive. So now that we have our file transfer location set up, we need to configure Zotero and the Zotfile add-on to use it. To do this, go to Tools, Zotfile Preferences, and select the Tablet Settings tab. Enable the Use Zotfile to Send and Get Files from Tablet option. You'll get a message about a saved search to keep track of your tablet files. That's good, so just click OK. Next, we have to configure the most important setting, the base folder that we'll use as our file transfer location. So here, I'll select Choose, and then navigate to my Google Drive location. Remember, I created a subfolder called Zotfile earlier as a location for this. So I'm going to select that now. If Zotfile can successfully access this location, you'll see a green check mark. If not, check your settings and try again. Now, you can choose if you want PDFs stored directly in this folder, or if you'd like Zotfile to create subfolders for you for your subcollections. This is a personal preference, and I just leave mine at the default. Finally, let's make sure that we have these two options set at the bottom. Rename files when they are sent to the tablet, and automatically extract annotations when getting PDFs back from tablet. This automation part was going to save us a little bit of work. So now that these options are set, we can close the preferences, and we're ready to try it. So let's try sending a file to our tablet so we can work with it. Now, in my collection here, I've identified an article that I want to read and annotate on my tablet. This is the article by Houston & Houston in the Literature Review collection for my MRP. To set it up for my tablet, I simply select the item, right-click, and select Manage Attachments, Send to Tablet. I'm working with one article here, but you can actually select more than one item at a time if you want to send a bunch of files at once. Now, when I make this selection in the menu, two things happen. First, and this is the more obvious of the two, I'll get a little pop-up window in Zotero at the bottom telling me that the item is being sent to my tablet. The second thing that happens is that Zotero adds a tag to my item. So by default, this tag is underscore tablet, but you can change this in your Zotfile settings if you want. The important thing is that you do not want to edit or remove this tag because it will mess things up in this Zotfile PDF workflow. Zotfile uses this tag to keep track of which files you want to read and annotate on your device, so don't mess with it. If you added the saved search for tablet files on the tablet, you'll now see that your item is listed there. Now I can go to my tablet. I'm using an iPad and the free Adobe Acrobat Reader app. In this app, I use the Files button at the bottom to choose a file I want to open. I'll tap the Google Drive location on the left. You might be asked to log into Google if you haven't done that already. I can access my Zot Files folder, and in there, I will find the PDF that I chose in Zotero. So I'll just tap to open it. Now, in Acrobat Reader, I use the pencil icon in the lower right to indicate that I want to highlight and add comments. So let's highlight a sentence here. Uh, tap the highlight, hold down and drag to highlight an area, and add a comment to the article by tapping the dialog button, tapping where we want the comment to appear, and then entering some text. Now, some apps let you do handwriting, make doodles, and other things to PDFs. It's important to remember, though, that Zotero is perfectly fine with anything you do to the PDF files, but only the highlighted text and comments can be imported back into Zotero as notes. All right, I've done uh, some annotations, so I'll tap Done here. This will save the file in Google Drive, and you can see now that if I reopen it, my highlights and comments are still there. So let's go back to Zotero on my laptop and watch the magic. So now that I'm back in Zotero, I want to get my PDF files back from my tablet. If I added the saved search for tablet files, I can go right to that folder in Zotero and find the file that I want to retrieve. Otherwise, I can go back to the collection where I got the file from and locate the item there. I find it easier to use the Tablet Files folder. Now to bring the attachment back into Zotero, just right-click and go to Manage Attachments, Get from Tablet. You'll see a pop-up showing that Zotero is retrieving the file. And Zotero should automatically extract all your highlights and comments and place them in a note. 
But I have found that once in a while the automatic method doesn't work, but it's not a problem. I can always do the extraction manually by right-clicking on the item, navigating to Manage Attachments, and selecting Extract Annotations. And there we go. We have a new note, and in it we see our highlighted text and our comments, with links to them in the original PDF files. You'll also notice that that tablet tag has been removed from the item now that it's been retrieved. And if you have the saved search for tablet files enabled, you'll see that the entry has been removed from there as well. That's the workflow. You can send items to and from your tablet anytime. If you send a file to your tablet but never actually use your tablet to open and annotate it, it's not a problem. You could just get the files back from your tablet even if they're not changed. There are just two things you need to remember when using this method for annotating your files. The first thing is something that I've already mentioned. Do not delete or edit the underscore tablet tag that Zotfile uses to keep track of things. It's really critical to how the whole tool works. Secondly, it's important to know that when you send a file to your tablet, Zotfile doesn't move the file from Zotero into your Google Drive. It actually makes a copy. So what that means is that there's going to be one version in Zotero as an attachment, and one version in your shared file location in Google Drive in this case, which your tablet can access. Let me show you an example and why this matters. I'll choose an item here, and I'll send it to my tablet. Now, if I open Google Drive and look in the Zotfile folder, you can see the PDF file is there. But if I go back to Zotero, I can also select the PDF attachment, right-click, and select Show File. What this does is opens the folder where this file is located on my computer. Now, when these two windows are side by side, you can see that these are two different files in two different locations. There's a copy of the file in Zotero's internal storage system. You can see it's a weird long folder path that I normally don't worry about. But when I sent the file to my tablet, it created a copy in the Google Drive folder. So what this means is that it's possible that I could open the file from Zotero or from my tablet, but each file is different because there are two copies. Now, most of the time, this won't affect you, but it does mean that you have to be careful about doing your reading and annotation in the spot where you planned on doing it. If you read the article on your tablet and then you don't get it back from your tablet and open it in Zotero uh, and make annotations, you can actually cancel them all out or overwrite them. So to prevent problems, if an item is marked as being on your tablet, only open it on your tablet. If you do want to stop annotating or reading a PDF on your tablet and switch to doing it from Zotero or your computer instead, get the file back from your tablet first and then proceed with your work. There you have it. That's how to integrate Zotero into your reading and annotation workflow using Zotfile. We covered how to set up Zotfile so you can use your tablet or iPad to read and annotate PDF files, showed you the workflow for getting files to and from your tablet, and the hopefully automatic extraction of annotations into Zotero notes. This brings us to the end of Unit 2. In Unit 3, I'll be talking about how you can go even further with Zotero, using it to manage your research workflow and keep track of your search strategies. See you there.